Hi everybody, Mr. Essery here, and Mrs. Essery is with us today behind the camera. Hi guys! Alright, so today, before we get started with our lesson, I'm going to go back to last week's lesson. If you guys remember, last week when we made Invisible Ink, we were talking about acids and bases. And the last thing that we did at the end of the video is we put... <laughs> sorry, our cat decided to join us. Um, we put a egg in a jar of vinegar. Um, vinegar, as you know, has acetic acid in it, and we said that it was going to dissolve the eggshell, dissolve all the proteins in the eggshell. So, what we're gonna do is we are going to see exactly how that turned out. So, I can get the egg out of here. You can see, I almost had it out. Right here, we have a completely dissolved egg. Put this in the paper towel here. So all you have here is the yolk. Pretty crazy stuff, huh? So, um, that just shows, you know, just what acetic acid can do. That was an egg sitting a week in this jar. What happens with it is very kind of squishy, as you can probably tell. Um, definitely not like a normal egg. So, what we're talking about today is we are going to talk about circuits. And as you can see right here, what we have here is a snap circuit set. It is something that is a pretty much, you know, a do-at-home mini circuit kind of make-it-yourself kit. This is something that is, we have at school, we have a gear up. Um, something fun to do, just to kind of play around with, but it's also similar to what we have in our own homes, the electricity inside our own homes. So Mrs. Esther is going to describe exactly how this works while I make a quick circuit and show you. So what is the first kind of circuit we are making? The first kind of circuit we're going to make today is a series circuit. There are really two different types of circuit that we're going to talk about. Series circuit is the simple circuit with one pathway. And so right now, Mr. Estri is building a series circuit. And again, you'll see that that is a very simple one pathway circuit. And these tools, or the, these kits, we have at Gear Up, actually. They're super neat because you can examine the flow of electricity by snapping the parts together. Hence the name Snap Circuit. All right, so the first thing that we're going to make is a fan, actually, if I can finish this up. So, what I've done here is I've made a circuit. It has a battery right here that powers this fan that's right here, and a switch. Just like you guys have light switches and switches or other things in your house, all you do is hit the switch and it powers the circuit. Um, this, what I did here is this completes the circuit. Without hitting the switch, the circuit is closed off, so no power is actually flowing through it. Once I turn it on, it starts, and to turn it off, it goes off. So. so you can actually see, it's showing you what's happening when it's off, and how there's a disconnect in the circuit. But when we turn it on, that's then moved over and connected, which allows for our fan to turn on just like it would in your bedroom. Exactly, like a ceiling fan in your bedroom. So let's say a lot of times whenever you guys turn on a fan in your house, oftentimes a light, whoops, knocked over the fan. Um, a lot of times a light comes on with that. So that's what I have here. Another thing we added here, the lights, you can kind of see here, see it better. Turn it on. Interesting. For some reason, the fan is not working in this. Any idea why this may be necessary? So it might be that the light is taking too much of the current to turn it on. Ah, see right there. Whenever we turn it on, it starts to move just a little bit. Mm. Tell you what, this is probably a case where the batteries may not have quite the juice that we thought they did. So what this, when this happens is, you know, when you start to lose power in something, you start to not be able to power just one thing. It, obviously, this has enough power to turn on the light because that's simple. Pretty simple thing right there. 
but for some reason it does not turn the fan on. So, let me take this back apart. Put this back here, put this back here. And we have the fan working again. So, this is, you know, a series circuit. Something called a series circuit. Now, we also have something called a um, parallel. Par parallel circuit. Now, parallel circuits are similar in the sense that, you know, it has a circuit, has, you know, have an on off switch, something like that. Um, but in a parallel circuit, is there's two different flows of electricity going this way. There's one that starts the battery, goes through to the light, and one that goes through to the fan. So now notice, because there's two different pathways of electricity flowing through the circuits, um, it has enough to actually power both. Instead of trying to focus on just one or the other, or instead of just having to go through you know, both the fan and the light on one circuit, they are now able to be powered on two separate things, even though it's the same power source. And this way we actually get both to work this way. So this is why in your home, you can turn on a light switch and a fan at the same time, or sometimes they can be two separate switches. Um, they're all powered by the same thing. Everything in your house, you know, has the same source of power, like all the outlets, all the lights, switches, and everything. But it's not like if one light bulb in your house goes off, goes off that your entire house goes off. It's not like the entire circuit is broken because of one broken light bulb. That's what we have here. We have two different circuits going through. And we could, in theory, make a bunch of different things. We can have another third circuit going over on this side playing sounds, or another one on this side doing whatever, add another fan, add another light, which is much more like what you have in your house. Anything else you want to add, Miss Cesare? You've covered it pretty much. This is a parallel circuit. And again, your house runs on a parallel circuit because if your light bulb in your kitchen goes out, you don't want your fridge to stop working. So we have parallel circuits so that if our light bulb goes out, our fridge can still stay on. Just like in this parallel circuit, our light bulb and our fan both stay on. And remember, whenever we had it so that they're all on the same circuit, the fan and the light bulb going through the same circuit, we didn't have enough energy to power them both at the same time. That's kind of the same way like if you have you know, too many things plugged into an outlet, that there's too much energy trying to go to one specific thing, that sometimes it'll overload it and just some things just aren't gonna work the way you want. That's why you have power adapters. That's why we have, you know, try to plug in different things to as many different outlets as possible instead of as many things in just one outlet. All right. So again, super basic crash course electricity we have going on right here, um, showing you how different circuits work. Um, whenever we start next school year up, we'll probably get these out and play with these at the Gear Up After School program at Jeffersonville High School. Um, if you guys want to stop by, there's we have a book full of literally hundreds of different things you can do with just these snap circuits. And this is a very basic introduction to electricity, all right? Um, anyway, that's really all we have for today. I'm Mr. Essery. I'm Mrs. Essery. And hope you guys have a great summer.